Thank you so much, Zmira and OU Israel and Representative Abby Learn. It's a particular treat to go after you because many, many years ago when I was young, a young single girl, I used to follow Abby Learn around and go to her uh, Torah Shiram. So it's it's a slut and a treat. Um, Safe Root gives us a very, very rare window uh, because of its rich depiction of interactions between people into their relationships in a way that I think we don't see so often elsewhere in Tanakh. And there are two things that our tailor made in terms of their relevance to our times right now uh, in Sefer Ruth that I want to focus on tonight. One of them is chesed, but a very unique brand of chesed that we find in Sefer Ruth. And the other one is redemption, geula. And even in a, a short, brief share about Sefer Rut, we cannot ignore the question, the big glaring question in Sefer Rut, and that is what in the world was going on that night in the silo? Was there not a better way to set up this shidduch? Um, the Medrash tells us that Rut's name gives us insight into who she was. Rut, she was able to see, to penetrate, straight through to the words of her mother-in-law. Ruth's essence was an ability to see deeply into the character of others. Naomi, by her own description, we know that she was not no longer a very um, young, fun, happy person to be around. She calls herself Mara, and yet Ruth sees the value of this person. It's almost... Uh, impossible to to tease apart when we're reading about Ruth and Naomi. Wait a second. Is she following Naomi because of her attachment to Naomi? Or is she following Naomi because of her being drawn into Judaism? But we know that because she sees the depth and value of who Naomi is as a person, Ruth comes to appreciate that all that Naomi is, is rooted in a Torah lifestyle and and who Naomi is, is the result of the Torah and mitzvot that she has practiced her whole life. So Rud is able to look at this person who everybody gawks at when she returns to Beit Lechem and nobody could believe that this is the same aristocratic, happy uh, person with good fortune as she was before and yet Rut can see to the core of who she is. And the relationships in Sefer Rut are all based on this ability to see who the person is. It's what enables people to do chesed in a meaningful way so that they know what the person's needs are. They can provide the right words that are bombs to the soul at the right moment. Uh, moving on to Boaz, who definitely shares this trait. Boaz, of course, takes notice of who Ruth is, realizes that she's so different than everyone else and inquires about her. And as a result of him appreciating the chesed she's done, uh, he is inspired to take special care of her beyond whatever his obligations of Leket were and to provide for her, make sure that she and Ami are provided for with dignity and, and definitely beyond their needs. Uh, in order to really understand what's going on with Boaz, the way he views Rut, and the way we'll see he views even his farmhands, we have to look a little closer at what goes on that night in the silo. Um, the Medrash tells us, <laughs> that when a person is, a state, in, is in a state of fear, it acts as that fear acts as a stumbling block in their way. And Boaz is one of the two examples the Midrash gives as somebody who, rather than allowing his fear to trip him up, to be a stumbling block for him, has bitachon, trusts, relies on Hashem, and therefore he is protected. And the Midrash is referring to this moment in the silo. It says that it would have been expected, reasonable, for Boaz to curse at Ruth, to say, what are you doing? Do you know who I am? Get out of here. The word used in the Medrash is to curse at her. And yet he does the opposite. He blesses her. Bruja at Lashem Biti. And to understand this, we need to see it in the context of two other events. Um, this is often spoken about the various events that lead up to uh, the unions uh, where there is the conception of 
the progeny who will be the ancestors of the Davidic line and, and eventually, hopefully soon, Mashiach ben David. Um, these three unions are all, what they have in common uh, is that they're all shrouded in darkness. Um, different different sorts of darkness. Rabbi Yaakov Moshe my father points out the similarities and the differences. First, we have Lot and his daughters, where the confusion and darkness is born of drunkenness. And uh, Lot doesn't know what he's doing. Uh, then we have Tamar, who, when she is um, seducing Yehuda, is wearing a disguise. So he has no idea what he is doing. And here we come to Boaz and Rut, and the darkness here is the darkness of, of night. It's the darkness of night, and really Boaz has two options. He can run away, curse her, leave, or he can give in to the Yitzhahara, which is what his two predecessors did. But he chooses a third choice. And that is, he says, we're going to leave this pattern of darkness and confusion. Lini po ad haboker. We're going to wait till we have the clarity of morning. And specifically, he's waiting for the clarity that uh, halacha will, uh, the, the light that halacha will shed on the situation. He says, we're going to find out, is there a goel? Is there a closer goel than me in this situation? Let's wait, and we'll wait till we have the clarity of morning. And this is what the Medrash means when it tells us, Abotech Bashem Yesugav. What affords Boaz this presence of mind at that moment? So, um, again, uh, also Rav Yaakov Moshe Popko continues, and he says that the Gemara teaches us that uh, there are three things that the Beit Din Shalmata, the uh, earthly courts decided, which received this uh, stamp of approval from the Beit Din Shalmala, from the heavenly courts. And one of them is the idea that a person can greet others with the name of Hashem, which we would think would be using Hashem's name in vain. Now, the person who instituted that practice was Boaz. The Vilna Gon teaches us that if you want to really know a person, you look at the Torah that they taught us. What does it mean that Boaz taught us that when you greet a person, it is not using Hashem's name in vain if you address them with Hashem's name? So Boaz greets his farm hands. Not the aristocracy, not even not me or Root, not someone prestigious, but his farm hands by saying Hashem Imachem. When he comes and he encounters them, that day that Root is uh, uh, picking up the sheaves of grain, he says Hashem Imachem. And they respond to him because they've been trained and they say back to Boaz, Yivarechecha Hashem. Boaz sees the divine in every single person, even in his farm hands. And so he is the one who institutes for us the practice of greeting someone with the name of Hashem. And this is what affords him that presence of mind that night in the silo. He looks at Rut at something that looks like a very questionable at best act, but he sees her good intentions. He sees the divinity in her, he sees the godliness in her, and he sees her motives. And so he's able to say, He's able to see the beauty and the chesed in what she's doing. And these relationships in Sefer Rut are fabrics that are woven from acts of chesed, but specifically these acts of chesed where people could really look and appreciate the other people. Um, Right now, I think that we're seeing, in, at least in my lifetime, an unprecedented level of chesed. And I want to return to that idea soon as we, we put this chesed theme on hold for a moment. Something else that there is in common, all these three unions that uh, will give forth to the Davidic line to Mashiach ben David, is the fact that they're all initiated by women. These are encounters between men and women, and even they, though they're in ancient times, they're all initiated by women. What can we learn from that? So the Sitka Satsazik teaches us something very interesting. He says, based on the Nevuah in Sefer Yirmiyahu, that says that in the time of Mashiach, Isha to Sovev Geber, women will either cause the actions of men or women will initiate the relationship with men. He says, 
that this is actually really a metaphor, that this is talking about the one who is always the woman in the relationship uh, with Hashem, and that is Knesset Yisrael. And he says, once upon a time ago, right after the Chet HaMiraglim, there was a group of people called the Mapilim, and they did not listen to Moshe. They said, you know what? We made a mistake not wanting to enter Israel. We're going to go now. We're going to push our way in, and we're going to go anyway. And Moshe Rabbeinu warn, warns them. He says, V'hi lo titzach. Rav Tzadok HaKohen of Lublin points out that whenever it says, V'hi, Chazal teach us this specific time is the Yosei Min HaKlal. It's the exception. There's going to be another time where it's going to work. Rav Tzadok says that time is the time, the era of Mashiach. In the time of Mashiach, Am Yisrael, the woman in the relationship, is going to initiate. Before it's the right time, before the time is right for Mashiach, Knesset Yisrael, Am Yisrael is going to return, and they're going to say, Hashem, now. They're going to push forth like the Mapilim intended to, like they wanted to. And they're going to say, Hashem, it's time for the Geula, it's time for the redemption now. And this is why all of these initiations were initiated, all these relationships were initiated by women, because they're all foreshadowing the time of Mashiach. The Hilo Titzlach, but then it will be something that is Mutzlach. It will be successful, the efforts of Am Yisrael. They will be successful in the time of Mashiach. We've seen this unprecedented level of chesed between vastly different groups of society. And I really, uh, seeing it happen here um, and, and just getting to witness what's going on in, in Eretz Yisrael, I don't see what's going on outside of Eretz Yisrael, but in Am Yisrael and Eretz Yisrael uh, is, is, I think, a similar brand of chesed that we see in Sefer Rut. It's people opening their eyes up and seeing uh, a chesed and a gvura in parts of Am Yisrael that each other, that the other parts may have previously dismissed. It's looking and seeing that people who we would not have expected possess that Jewish um, incredible gvura, and it's, it's a gvura that's exhibiting itself really in the realm of chesed, even though that might sound contradictory. It's, it's a, a heroism that's specifically within the realm of doing kindness on on you know, in, in the micro and on very great levels in the macro for other people. And um, it is my hope that we're going to push forth, like uh, Ruth Tzadok says we can in the time of Mashiach, as as Ruth did that night, um, and, and as the, other does, did, the others had bringing forth the progeny that will bring to Mashiach ben David. Um, so I, I just, uh, what I daven for, maybe we could all, Daven for everybody has their own tefillot, and uh, when I daven for all of uh, our, all of the soldiers and and everybody who are who is uh, putting their life on the line right now, I say, you know, Hashem, bring them back, but don't just bring them back. Don't just bring us a sweeping Yeshua here for Am Yisrael right now at this very moment in time in 2023. Let's take it all the way. Let's daven that this is the ultimate Yeshua. Let's daven that this is a moment in time that we can push through as Am Yisrael, Isha Tzisovei Gever, and say, Hashem, this is it. Bring us the Yeshua in this war, but bring us at this moment the ultimate redemption. And hopefully the chesed that we're all doing will bring achtat and bring to this Be'ulah.